Now, before I get into iNav and look at the receivers tab, I want to take a look at my radio because I want to configure the switches so that I know what channels are controlling what features of the flight controller. So I want to get all these assignments set up. I've already done that, but I am currently using a Radio Master TX16S radio. I've got a Crossfire module plugged into the back. And I have set up this radio with this with the following switch configuration. This switch here I am using to arm the aircraft. I also have this configured so that I can switch into return to home mode. So if I'm out flying and I want to bring the plane back or have some problem and I want it to come back, I can just throw it into return to home mode. It's not recommended that you set up this switch like this because if you're using ELRS, your arming switch is dedicated to whatever switch you assign it to. Even if it's a three position switch, you cannot assign a second function to it. ELRS maps whatever your arm switch is to channel five, and that's all that channel five is dedicated to. So you couldn't even set up an alternative function on here. But I have this set up to where I can arm my aircraft, and then I can also set it into return to home mode so the airplane will fly itself back without my input. And it also doesn't take it out of being armed if I throw it in this position. So this switch here controls some auto functions. There's an auto tune function that we'll use. It's kind of a one time thing, but you can repeat it at any time to tune your controls in flight. So when you first made your aircraft with iNav, it's going to seem kind of sluggish. It's not going to really want to move. So you put it in this auto tune mode and then you, you work it to the left, to the right, up, down and take it to its extremes until it gets to feel like it's in control. So it's 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 monitoring your inputs and the performance of the aircraft to tune the settings so that your controls work as you want them to. And once you've got that tuned, then you can turn that off. Now this is also a three position switch and I can set this down to enable another auto feature which is auto trim. And this will set an auto level trim. So you put that in auto trim mode and take your hands off the controls and the flight controller will attempt to get your aircraft flying straight and level. And that'll set the level trims on your radio. And then you can flip that off back into normal flying. This switch here I've set to change different modes and I haven't talked about any of the flight modes and I will cover those in a later step but in this switch I have three modes I can put it into loiter mode which will make the airplane fly around in circles at its current location so I can be flying along and throw it into loiter mode and then it'll just circle out there wherever it is at that location the, mi the middle position is angle mode which is kind of a muted assisted mode where I can fly without like doing aerobatics. It won't let me roll the aircraft. I can't dive and loop the aircraft. It puts some constraints on your throws so your aircraft remains in control. It's kind of like a stabilization function and that's typically what I like to fly in is angle mode. There's another mode called acro that I'm not using that will allow you to do acrobatics. And then if I put it in the down position I can fly manual mode and that's just as if there was no flight controller in the loop. So that'll just let me fly the plane as if I just have a receiver in the plane with my radio with nothing in between. This switch over here is an auxiliary switch. If I turn it up that will enable the black box data recorder. My flight controller has a black box data recorder that I can enable. So that's good to collect data if you're troubleshooting your aircraft or it's exhibiting some weird behavior or if it goes down, you'd, it, it'd be nice to be able to collect that data and load it into something that can read it so it can show you what happened. And if I put it in the down position, it'll activate the onboard beeper. Like if my plane goes down somewhere and I can't see it, I can activate the beeper. iNav has its own beeper if it detects that it's down 
it will start beeping itself. Or if it's in fail-safe, you turn off the radio, it'll start beeping SOS. So you don't necessarily need that, but it's good to have that option. This switch controls my OSD. I have a couple of different OSD views that I can switch between. My primary one is with it in the up position. I've got an alternate one in the mid position. And then I can turn it completely off to have a clear view through my goggles by putting it in the down position. This switch here currently doesn't do anything. It's not connected to anything. So I have a free switch here I could set up for something else. And then I have a momentary switch here, which doesn't do anything on the aircraft, but I have it programmed in my radio to, to report the battery voltage of the radio. So let's take a look. I am currently running Edge TX. Welcome to Edge TX. Disarmed. Angle mode. Track off. So I've gone in and I've given all my inputs labels so I know what they are. So these first four, aileron, ele elevator, throttle, rudder, those are pretty straightforward. And then here you can see I've assigned arm to the SE switch, tuned the SA switch, SB is mode, SF is camera selection, SC is auxiliary for beeper and data recorder, OSD is on the SD switch, and I have the pan on this trainer 5 input. My head tracker connects through the trainer input and it's currently not connected, which is why it's showing up white here instead of yellow. But that channel 5, or this pan input is connected to that channel. So I've gone in and given all the inputs names and I've done the same thing to the outputs. So I can see that channel 1 I've assigned to aileron, channel 2 is elevator, channel 3 is throttle, channel 4 is rudder. That's pretty typical. And then the arm is on channel 5, tuning is on channel 6, mode is on channel 7, camera is on channel 8, auxiliary is channel 9, OSD is on channel 10, channel 11 has no connection, and then my, my pan is on channel 12. And you can go into the mixer to see how straightforward and convenient it is to name all these inputs and outputs because it made it very clear when looking at the mixer what's connected to what. So now I know what channels are going to my receiver so I can use those to drive the various features of the flight controller. I'm using Crossfire which enables 12 channels to be sent over to the receiver so that's why I have 12 channels defined even though I'm not using channel 11. So if we now go into iNav we can go into the receiver tab I'm going to bypass programming right now. That's a little advanced feature that I think you can't really address until you know your inputs. So I want to go to the receiver tab. And you can see as I move these sticks, it's driving the channels. And there's my arm. 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 There's Auto. that. Channel 6, Manual. channel 7, Angle channel 8, mode. channel 9, channel 10. 11 is not used and channel 12 is not connected. So all my channels are coming in through iNav, and this has been set up by default to make this work. I didn't have to change anything in Crossfire, because if you look over here at these settings here, this is already set up for Crossfire. And if you remember from the Ports tab, there was this UART2, which my Crossfire receiver is connected to, was already set up as a serial RX, or serial receiver. So in the receiver tab, it tells you right here, remember to configure a serial port via ports tab for the serial receiver. Well, it's already got that set up by default. But if you're using something different, need a, a different setup, you would come in here and change it here. So the receiver type is serial. It's coming in through a, a UART. It's using the Crossfire protocol. ELRS also uses Crossfire protocol, but there's other protocols that you can select from here, including SBUS and others. Serial port inverted comparing to protocol default. There is an RS-232 serial protocol that has been defined for ages, and it defines the signal levels that are required for it to function. And in the definition 
of the protocol. It defines a high input or an on bit as a high voltage and a low bit as a low voltage, or it may be reversed. But some implementations of the RS-232 serial interface, i.e. UART, have that inverted. So you might be connecting a device that's got an inverted signal protocol to iNav, and you would have to invert that. If you need to do that, you can invert that here. That's kind of a technical point that we don't even have to pay attention to right now if you are using Crossfire. And I suspect ELRS also does not require that. But don't quote me on that. This block here, I've never even looked at, so we're not going to look at it here. It's not important right now, but it looks like you can set up some expos for various things, throttle, yaw, and I don't know what this general RC deadband and expo is, but if you want to dig into that, that's something that you can do on your own. So there's nothing I've changed here. And by the way, this channel map by default is AETR, Aileron Elevator Throttle Rudder, and that's traditionally mapped to channels 1, 2, 3, and 4. I don't know why they don't list them in order here, because I have channel 1 is the aileron, channel 2 is the elevator, channel 3 is the throttle, but it's showing up as number 4, and rudder is showing up on the third one there. So I don't understand that. And if I were a iNav developer, which I aspire to be someday, I would go in and give the ability to label these inputs so that I know what they are. Channel 5 is arm, channel 6 is mode, channel 7 is whatever it is. I don't even know now. Channel 7 is my, no, channel 6 is tune, channel 7 is mode, channel 8 is camera, channel 9 is auxiliary, and I know this because I've written them down on a piece of paper that I'm reading right now. So I, I recommend that you write down your settings on your radio, which channels you've configured for what, so that when you come into iNav, you have that information. But like I said, it would be really nice if we could just add labels here to indicate what they're for. So now we have the receiver receiving signals. It's all set up on our radio. We know what we're looking at. We can now move on to other tabs and see what we can configure for the flight controller. And as always, just remember to disconnect.